I mean, a lot of the older research when it was talking about anxiety was mostly focusing on just the amygdala, right? Which, which again, was mostly the emotional stuff. And a lot of people talked about, oh, it's just neurotransmitter imbalances, which people will argue that for the depression conversation as well, which is, yes, absolutely true on some level. But again, we always want to figure out what are the common denominators and what are the mechanism of actions that are actually leading to either neurotransmitter imbalances or nutrient deficiencies or imbalances or dysfunction. And what we see in the anxiety kind of research and world is that generally there's overactivation of the HPA axis, right? So all the stuff going on with our adrenal glands, and there's actually a lot of neuroinflammation going on as well. So inflammation in the brain, some people will take it a step further. And of course, if you're going to talk about the brain and because the brain has its own whole immune system going on with the microglia and all that, the, there's going to be the gut brain connection. So some people want to you know, talk probiotic therapy and all that. I think that gets too complicated and too myopic. I think some of the really basic building blocks are, again, if we're overactivated all the time, if our nervous system is stressed out, all that, what can we do to support that? Because our body will use more of those nutrients. So a lot of times it's the basics, methylated B vitamins, omega fatty acids, vitamin D, um, something also like, you know, a good, a good quality krill oil, all of those things are going to be the foundations adaptogens many times can be super helpful. And believe it or not, something like zinc, some of the greatest density of zinc is in our hippocampus. So like if we're having mood issue, and again, that goes back to, again, what kind of an anxious person am I, am I, am I really snippy and mean? And do I feel like I have a short fuse all the time or am I super lethargic? Cause those can be different things too. So I think just getting some of those again to your point some amino acids some people will do like monotherapy of amino acids i think again sometimes that can get complicated for people but your basics like a good b vitamin a good vitamin d um zinc and omega and for some people potentially a vitamin c or like i said an, an adaptogen of sorts um to kind of support that adrenal gland so those are i think some of the basic nutrients that most americans just living life anyway are deficient in you can add in things like magnesium as well if you want that's also of course a really popular one for the you know the nervous system um and then some people you know there's really cool research now on mitochondrial dysfunction so what are your coenzyme q10 levels you know like are you taking something to support the mitochondria and getting antioxidants. So a lot of the basic boring nutrients that have really great research that again, they're not super sexy, but they work. And there's a lot of, again, working on the neural pathways, working on inflammation, working on the stress response, which ultimately is going to kind of trickle down to anxiety and depression because anxiety and depression, most of the time they do, you know, coexist. Um, and there's a lot of the same symptoms. So if you're experiencing one kind of mood thing, there's a good chance that there's some under underlying mechanisms there too. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to, I want to ask, I, I have, I genuinely want to know what you think about this because I don't know what I think about it. So just, you know, when I went through school, so I studied psychology, I thought I was going to be a psychiatrist, you know, and when we learned all about depression and anxiety, it was all around an imbalance of neurotransmitters. And that was the root cause. Right. And then in my own personal journey, you know, did all my SSRIs, did uh, amino acid therapy, that for me helped. And also when I realized, oh, a lot of my candida and SIBO, when I healed that, my anxiety just like went away. Like my depression just went away. And I thought, oh, this gut thing makes sense. And then, you know, time passes and I start learning all of this stuff um, from other people, like more in the holistic health space saying that, you know, the whole neurotransmitter idea is completely it's just complete bullshit like that. It, and, and that it has nothing to do with, um, uh, anxiety or depression. It's all about brain inflammation. Um, and, and, and I thought, I mean, kind of makes sense. I mean, it, it makes sense to me. And then at the same time, but also when we do it that way, it does help. So I, I don't know. I, and I'm not at that point. I was like, I don't even give a shit anymore. I'm past this. Like, <laughs> I'm kind of past it. Yeah, I, don't like, care. I don't care anymore. Uh, it's, it's not relevant. I'm happy now. Out. I don't care. Um, but I, I want to know what, what your stance is on that, on that conversation, because just for me reflecting, I was like, honestly, I, I don't really care to like, I don't know, but I was thinking, wow, I went through an entire like college education and learned in how many classes, you know, 20 different classes that this is how it is. And actually now that, you know, and I was looking at, I think it was Kelly Brogan who was talking a lot about this. She's like, there's no actual research that proves this. It's all been a theory. And I thought, and I'm going through that. I'm like, holy shit. Like people are learning that like they're, 
in their entire college, post-college doctorate, like that this is the truth and it's just a theory. Um, yeah. That has huge implications. So I don't know what, how I feel about it, but I, I just wanted to, to see what, what you think because it's people, interesting. People love clickbait anything clickbait health information clickbait you know like news so i think it's easy to say like oh yeah neurotransmitter imbalances and i actually thought that for a really long time too and when i was actually submitting like topics for my dissertation i was like all right well if i'm going to write 25,000 words on something there has to be substantial information to support this to your point there really was not a lot of information out there but again, so when I was doing a lot more of the research and was looking into neuroinflammation, that is where so much I think of the, the science is going to go um, over the next couple of years for so many things, but particularly again for mood imbalances, anxiety, depression, call it whatever you want, because the brain, right, of course we have our blood brain barrier, but in the brain we have our own, uh, our brain has our own immune system, right? And so like our immune cells actually have receptors for neurotransmitters as well. So there is a direct conversation between what's going on in our brain immune system and our quote regular immune system, which can of course be linked to what's going on with our GI tract, right? Because not only does it produce 30 different neurotransmitters, but also it's a part of our immune system system response as well. So there is that. But when we look at things like the cytokines with everything in health, there are pro-inflammatory cytokines and there are anti-inflammatory cytokines. And there's really strong evidence and research to support this idea of when we have an imbalance of these cytokines, which again are just compounds or sort of these signaling molecules of the immune system response, right? Which again, the immune system is just always secondarily responding to our central nervous system. So that goes back to stress inflammation buckets, right? So it's always about, again, just following that string down. So when we have too many of these pro-inflammatory cytokines, what that can do is lead to imbalances of our B vitamins, right? Which ultimately can make up things like neurotransmitters that can cause us to have low-grade inflammation, systemic inflammation in the body elsewhere, that can cause us to have disruption in the microflora. So a lot of that does stem from that brain inflammation piece, again, because what that can do is then cause imbalances elsewhere in, like I said, the HPA axis, and then kind of the inflammatory cytokines elsewhere throughout the body, which then, you know, take it as far as you want. But that's why I think when people look at neurotransmitter imbalances, that's a fine jumping off point if you want to do research, but we always want to ask, okay, fine. If that is the argument you have, if that was the problem, what would actually happen or what would be causing that? So when people get like organic acid testing, what they're actually looking at is the metabolites of their neurotransmitters, which are mostly magnesium and B vitamins and potentially magnet, uh, like CoQ10 and all that kind of stuff. So it goes back to that bigger conversation of like, fine, take that as a jumping off point, but what are the common denominators in any of those theories?